Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you the Brino TLC 200 Pro time lapse camcorder. So I've been doing this a lot. It's been really good and really helpful for some projects I've been working on. And I want to do this little instruction video on how to use it. So first things first, as soon as you turn it on, it'll put on the settings from your previous project. Now, if you want to adjust these settings, first thing you want to do is adjust the time lapse. So click the time button and adjust to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to read them off. ASAP, so right now, we'll start shooting as quickly as possible. One second, two second, three second, five, 10 second, 20 second, 30, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, and custom. So let's do one hour, Oop, which is what I typically have been using it for. Click OK. So it automatically has all these things. So we're going to go to settings. So we're going to click menu and OK for settings. So for the same menu, we have time lapse and frame rate, more, custom image, exposure, HDR range, timer, scene, image quality, white balance mode, and that's it. You probably won't use a lot of these, but for time lapse frame rate, you're definitely going to want to adjust this. We have 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, and 1 frames per second. I've been using 20 so far and I've been happy with it. So it's kind of a bad menu because after you exit the same menu, it takes you back to the original menu. So click setting again and I'll show you the custom image. The custom image I don't really use is saturation, contrast, and sharpness. I don't typically use that because I do that in post, but you can adjust it there in the custom image setting. Exposure, same thing. I typically you can see your scene after you click it and you can adjust uh, if you want more exposure or less exposure. I typically keep it in the middle because it, I trust the automatic exposure of this camera. So, uh, HDR range. HDR range, I've been keeping it at medium. You can do high if you're really into HDR or low if you don't want any HDR at all. But I've been keeping it medium just for fun. And it's been working out pretty well for my current settings. The timer is the important part. Uh, so the timer is if you want to set a time, if you want to just leave it out there for several days straight, you set the timer. So this will be from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And you can add or subtract here, click the OK to go next, add or subtract here, OK. It moves in variance of one hour and 15 minutes. So just click OK when you're done with that. And it'll take you back to the main menu. So go back to settings. What's next? We have the scene. So I don't really use the scene. Uh, I typically do daylight, but if you're doing a nighttime or at twilight, uh, you can click whatever you want. I use daylight just for my current project. Um, image quality. I always do best. You should probably always do best. It really doesn't use that much space on the SD card unless you have a really small SD card. You'll probably want to use best. Now more in the settings menu has a lot of important stuff in it. As your timestamp, you're going to want to put that on usually. I usually put it on. It just puts in a black layer box frame underneath the frame when it's done exporting. You'll see it on. It doesn't overlay the image at all. So typically keep that on. Then we have the firmware version, the band filter, so anti-banding for your image if you end up having that problem. I don't, so I keep it off. The LED indicator, I, I don't really know why you would need an LED indicator to make sure it's not off or on. Uh, I typically just leave it on, but I don't typically see it. and set date and time. So set date and time is really important. It has to be accurate if you want to have a good time lapse that's custom and automatically on a timer. So even though you input the date, it does not adhere to daylight savings time. So just keep that in mind if you have this going on for months at a time. So make sure the time is accurate. And let's see. and low light recording. Uh, I typically have a low light recording on because I'll you know, have this on for hours at a time. Sometimes I'll be shooting at night, so I keep it on. 
So I believe that's everything. Oh no, one more, white balance mode. I always do auto white balance because if I have this going on for all day straight, I need it to be white balance. If you're doing a really short time lapse, then you can do one of these other daylight, shadow, cloudy, uh, or these other fluorescent, cool and white fluorescent. Is. So I always do auto. And that's everything for a setting menu. If you click over from the setting menu, it goes to SD storage and it just gives you a little information on your SD card. This won't take you anywhere, but it's just good to have. And then there's the focus. This, this is pretty important because you can't really focus on this camera very well. You kind of, you can't really see anything right now because it's just my wall in the background, but clicking these buttons will adjust the focus and it, it's kind of weird to use and it's a really high aperture so you don't really need to adjust the focus too much. But the main thing about focus that you need to remember is that this lens is actually, you can unscrew it. One second. You can unscrew it because it's interchangeable. I'm not going to take it completely off because the sensor is right underneath it and I don't want it to get dirty. But this lens can come off and I've noticed that if I'm interchanging this every once in a while just to switch out the batteries and the memory card, this can come loose and if it comes loose, the whole image will be blurred out. So every time you're about to put it away, just give it a little squeeze, make sure it's tight, and then you're good to go. That's pretty much it. So that's pretty much how you use the time lapse. You have the SD card input right here, and then you have some external ports if you want to send this directly into the computer. Uh, you typically will probably use the SD card, which I currently have an SD card inside. But yeah. So if you set up all your settings, you're happy with everything, you click the OK button, and now it's ready. It takes a second. Now it's ready to shoot. So you click OK, and you see it's recording, 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 and it shuts off. Camera's not off. The camera's just going to wait another hour before it takes the next picture. It's currently running right now. If you leave for several days, like what I do is I, I leave, I'll, I'll put it on for an hour and then I'll set the timer and I'll come back a month later to switch out the batteries and the SD card. So when you're done and you're ready to stop the video, you hold down the OK button. Just hold it down for a little while until this processing comes up. Do not turn it off while it's processing. And it says ready. Now you can turn it off, take out the SD card, take out the batteries, replace them, and put it back. So I hope that this helped you out. Leave any comments if you have any questions and I'll try and get back to you and I'll see you guys on the next video.